Elmaster EX. This award-winning system features the first single-engine joystick with digital electric steering and new autopilot capability. See Hellmaster EX in action at a Yamaha Outboard dealer or visit YamahaOutboards.com. Hey, tune into this week's weekly video fishing forecast for a preview of the latest digital edition of the Fisher Magazine. We have another open boat episode going back to the Fisherman Show a couple weeks ago. Reports and events from around the island and I go around the map as well with my personal reports. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Today is October 10th, 2024, and we are one day away from the big tog season opener on the North Shore of Long Island. That's the big news this week. Reg just set at three fish per person at 16 inches of fish on that side of the island. Now remember, on the 15th, the NY Bite region opens up as well for tog, and the only difference is you can keep four fish in the bite. Remember that you must follow the rules of the port that you leave from, meaning that if you leave from a North Shore port, you must follow the three fish at 16 inches starting on the 11th regulation, while if you leave from a port anywhere south of Orion Port, that's the New York Bite, you have to follow those NY Bite regulations, meaning you can't go to the North Shore to fish and return south of Orion until the 15th. The opposite goes for those on the North Shore fishing in the NY Bite Waters after the 15th. You cannot return with four keeper blackfish per person. You must follow the three fish a person rule that's in place on the North Shore. For nearly 90 years, the Viking fleet from Montauk has been putting anglers on the fish. Whether you jump on a half day trip, fish the deep for an overnight adventure targeting big game, a day trip to block, or a sunset cruise, their experienced captains and crew have you covered. Viking Fleet. Com. The latest digital edition of the Fisher Magazine, it is out now for the week. We got a bunch of great stories for you. Surf column, unconventional retrieves by Tony Durso. Freshwater, fantastic October. Small old panfish, it's a great month to go for them. In short, I wrote this one, it's called Build a Bite. It's all about how to build that blackfish bite and just in time for the season to kick off. Also, we have a tackle tip for you. It's single speed or two speed which one is better and which one should work in each situation that's by george jen all right we got another open boat special for you this week jenny kicks it back to the fisherman magazine event at the huntington hilton where she talks to three legendary surf casters jenny what do you got for us kicking back off right where i left off last week with open boat we are still at the fisherman magazine show such a big awesome show and we're gonna talk to some legendary fishermen that are here at the show that make sure you come to next year so you can meet these guys yourselves if you don't meet them out on the surf or on the boat or wherever you're at but we're gonna get some motivational quotes from these guys with all their years of experience so let's go talk to them hi i'm john skinner and a lot of times especially today people are asking me about uh, false albacore and the north fork well, you know what, we, you know, we're here in September, and what I see on the North Fork is there are two runs. Uh, September, the albies go into the sound. Now, uh, sometimes we see them on the surface, sometimes they just go by, and they go into areas, uh, you know, even as far west as Huntington, maybe, maybe even a little farther. Um, and it's a sporadic run in September. When we get them, it's, it's not very dependable. What I bank on is when it starts getting colder, all of those albies that went up west in the sound, suddenly when it gets cold, it's like 45 degrees in the morning, they kind of go, uh-oh, we've got to leave. And that's the run where we get them consistently. And that's in October, and it's really the second half of October, and actually the last couple of years, it's been the first half of November as well. So like right now, people are running around looking for albies on the North Fork, and they're complaining they're not finding any. Um, you know, I, I think they shouldn't worry about it. Um, hopefully, I know I have heard that there are Albies way up west, and uh, we'll get them. But we're going to get them second half of October, and uh, maybe the first, you know, ten days or so of November. Hey! Everybody turns around when I go. Hey! <laughs> Fall run is here. It's it's not coming. It's already here. 
So get your asses out there, get your rod, get your reels, get your children, get your kids, and go out and fish. Uh, I guess we're doing an interview here at the Fisherman Show. I'm Billy the Greek, if you don't know me. All my friends call me just the Greek. But uh, we'll get into the full run of striped bass and what you should be doing to catch some of them. Me, personally, I'm a bucktailer. I like bucktail fishing the most. So uh, I was just listening to a seminar, we won't mention who, but everyone's putting clips on bucktails. You can do that, but they fish way better without clips. And, it, and I don't fish braid. I'm probably one of the few people that don't fish braid with bucktails, but there's a reason for it. Braid is thinner diameter, sinks faster, gives the lure less action. So if you're fishing on a beach and you need a light lure, mono will sit higher and fish in a strike zone longer. And that's a real plus. So that might be the difference between you catching three fish or 10 fish, or 10 fish and 40 fish, who knows? Yeah, so now this is all starting. We have a ton of bait coming down the beaches and the, the wind was east, northeast, so this is gonna start it. So you guys gotta get out there, put some time in, see if you can find your fish, find your tides. Fish are always by tide, that's the main, that's the main ingredient you need to know. And unless you're like me, I can fish seven days a week. If you only got two or three, go fishing no matter what the tide. But you'll start to notice that the fish bite on a stage of the tide almost all the time. And, and once you get that down pat, then you can decide if it's a day bite or a night bite. That's the second thing you need to do. So if you're fishing all night and the fish are feeding in the day, you're in the wrong spot at the wrong time. So it probably helps to have a friend or two if you can get there. But other than that, we're getting the fish first, Jersey second. <laughs> and mind you, Billy was not talking smack about my seminar because I did fantastic. And I go. talked about bucktailing in the surf for stripers, so listen to Billy. Did you? Yeah, bucktail is the number one lure. The good part about a bucktail is that, first of all, it's a single hook, so it does the least amount of damage to the fish, which is really good. And, and bass have a tendency to inhale a bucktail, so way harder to miss a fish than on a plug. So you get that punch instead of that bite. You know, and even with a big belly in the line with a strong wind, you still hook them, you don't miss them. Whereas a plug, you'll miss a lot of fish. So if you get into bucktailing and learn, head design matters, by the way. Nobody talks about head design. There's multiple heads. There's bull heads, spro heads, bullet heads, arrow heads, ball heads, smile and bill heads. So you can do the ones you like the best. Sometimes uh, a ball head works very good in, in fast moving, deeper water. Uh, smile and bills and stuff like that. Fish good on the surf. Bullets and, and uh, Bullet heads and arrowheads sink much faster, so if you, if you need to get down a little deeper, a little quicker, you can switch to that. But everything's adjustable. And the length of the trailer you put up, bucktail, you can fit with a pork rind or the new fake pork rind, which is fat cow or whatever that stuff is. Or you can use a twisted tail, but usually a, a trailer on the back of a pork rind helps dramatically. And slower is better usually, but not always. So experiment, put some time in, Catch a big one. Billy, you're my hero. Thank you so much. All right, we got a special guest on this week's video fishing forecast. Mr. Poseidon gives us a report and what to expect from his event in a couple weeks. Mr. Poseidon, what do you got for us? Thanks, Matt. Appreciate that. Guys, what's up? Mr. Poseidon here. Going to do a little fishing report for the Fisherman Magazine. Let's start off with my tournament first. Coming up next week, the Montauk Striper Challenge. It's a three-day event, a great event. We also got the longest, most accurate cast, biggest fish caught by length only, trying to save the fish a little bit. Let's go, let's go. Guys, if you want to join, you get onto Instagram, go to my profile there, my link in my profile, and you should be able to join, no problem. I love these, these, uh, these bees in there. Anyway, go to my link in my profile, and uh, you can get all the information there, rules, regulations, you can even join. Hurry up, Sunday's cutoff day. It's reopening on, on the 17th, which we have uh, register on site, cash only, let's go. Let's talk a little bit about the fish out there. I've been hearing from a lot of guys, the fish are out there, they're getting there. We need a nice northeast, northeast wind to kick it a little bit and we'll get all those fish up. Also, we got the new moon coming up. Two days later, my tournament starts. You couldn't be sitting at a better spot. The report is out there now. They've been getting them a little bit, a little better than it was before. It's getting there, guys. Let's go, let's go. The fish are there. It's only you guys that are missing. When you get out there, fish it hard. The fish are never on the standstill. They're always moving. Do the right thing. Get out there, fish hard, and win that prize. Let's go, let's go. Thanks to Matthew Broderick. 
Thanks to the Fisherman Magazine. I appreciate everything. Here we go. And now the Dream Boat Fishing Challenge entries for the week. We only had one this week, New England subscriber Norman Bouchard of Marston Mills, Massachusetts, giving it another shot in the bluefish category with a 16-pounder, putting him in third in that category. Remember, rules state that contestants can submit as many entries as they wish. However, only the heaviest entry per species category will be entered. The leaderboard remains. Kyle Krauss and Scott Waterman are tied at 16 points each. Ahmed Solomon has 18 and is in first place. There are seven weeks left. Still plenty of time to enter your fish to win that Steiger Craft powered by Yamaha and many other great prizes, but you must be a Fisherman subscriber to enter. For all the details on how to enter and the rules, visit thefisherman.com. Okay, now let's check in with some upcoming events in the area. First up, October 14th is the Generations Bass Fishing Tournament hosted by the Harbor Crab and Restaurant. Then, going back to that Mr. Poseidon Tournament, October 17th through the 19th is the fourth annual three-day Montauk Striper Challenge. I plan on being out there for a day. October 19th is the Hempstead Lake Fall Family Fishing Festival. Then on October 19th is Bodie's fifth annual Striper Tournament. And the Fred Gallifaro Memorial South Shore Fishing Classic will take place from the 25th through the 27th at the end of the month. For more on events and all the information on them, visit thefisherman.com slash events. All right, let's head over to the map. I'll tell you what I've been hearing. First up, we have the Albany crew, Maximus, Jack, Jake. They went on the boat called the Hot Dog. Jack Albanese, he's 14 years old on a 50 wide stand up fought for an hour 25 minutes southwest of fire island they caught this nice tuna on a chunk is 155 pounds dressed really nice fish then captain kevin koch and on the right Len oppenheimer they got in on the last of the fluke season in fire island inlet area with a nice fish tim vess he fished jones inlet from the surf he reported this four pounder caught on a live peanut bunker Mike Ruiz, he checked in. He got a 33-inch striped bass from the surf from the Fire Island Inland area just after dark on a 4-inch gulp, and he released the fish. Brian Harris, he reports great fall striped bass fishing out of Jones Inlet. He caught the fish live lining a bunker. Then Frank checked in to let me know that he got this huge porgy 18 inches in the Kismet area on a high-low with some clam. It was one of the three big ones of this size that he caught. Also, Ryan and his crew said they fished on tail wrap charters in Montauk and reported that they took first place in the annual IBU Local 3 Sportsman's Tournament. Nice job, guys. Captain Jim is a great captain. Also got some personal reports for you. I am happy to announce the surf fishing has kicked off. It's in full swing. The East Hampton beaches all the way to Smith Point with huge, huge stripers, 30 pounds up to 45 pounds, and they're on giant sand eels. That means that the fish are going to stick around on these sand eels. They always do. Should be a great full run. I'm hearing there's a lot of action at night on needlefish, bucktails, SP minnows, mag darters. But during the day, the diamond jigs and all the sorts of tins with those yellow, green, white tubes, even red tubes are all getting a lot of action. And to follow up on that, Dylan Jewell sent me this shot from the Central South Shore, one of those fine sand eels fish he caught. Tyler Steiger, he also sent me this night shot of a sand eel bass caught from the Central South Shore. Bites hot right now. So a lot of surf fishing to be done. The fish are here up to 45 pounds and the fishing is hot and heavy. But remember, if you do have a report, email me at mbroderick at thefisherman.com. I'll try and get into the weekly video fishing forecast or the magazine. Our meteorologist, Rich Von Olin, his report is brought to you by Premium Bucktails. Rich. Hey, thanks, Matt. We'll check that weekend forecast. You can always check your favorite apps, weather tools, weather sites, whatever you got. This is a general heads up, general overview on the upcoming weekend. So with all the tropical stuff, uh, Milton, Helene, I've been kind of busy lately, so I haven't been out and doing much fishing, but hopefully get out in the next week or so. Maybe getting that bass run, some of the fish starting to come down the beaches. The fall run should be on shortly, so looking forward to that. Hopefully some good weather, too. Uh, water temps, 60s to near 70. 
the weather looks good for Friday. Northwest breeze, 5 to 15. I should be out there that day doing some stuff. And then Saturday going to be a little windy. Surf guys should be good. Bay should be all right. But, you know, west-northwest, 15 to 25. It'll be a little gusty there. The window on Sunday. I think some hope for the ocean guys on Sunday. It should be all right as the wind drops out a bit. Saturday, though, a little gusty. Northwest, you know, west-northwest, 15 to 20, gust to 25. Look at that window on Sunday. The winds uh, drop out. So I think that'll be the day to do some ocean stuff. Should be a lot calmer. Saturday, again, a little gusty, a little choppy. But uh, the surf should be good. And the bay should be okay. The sound, uh, okay for the most part. A little choppy, though. Then Sunday, I think, is the pick of the weekend in terms of uh, less wind. That should be a good day to get out in the ocean. Saturday highs mostly in the 70s, a nice mild October day. And then about 10 degrees cooler on Sunday, we get some 60s. Uh, one of my go-to apps is the Wind Guru. Northwest breeze, Friday looks terrific. And then, uh, you know, a little gusty wind on Saturday. Some of the colors on there, a little west-northwest, you know, maybe gust up to 25. And then Sunday, a little window. So I think we'll escape with uh, two for three on the weekend weather deal. Friday's terrific. Saturday, use caution with the wind. And Sunday, I think those winds drop out nicely, uh, going light northeast to southeast onshore late in the day. But should be the day you get in the ocean to do some fishing. So hopefully the bass start running, the fish start biting. If you get out this weekend, be safe. Catch them up as always. Matt, back to you. Now let's check in with Captain Timothy O'Rourke from Mountain Talk. Tim. Thank you, Matt. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, greetings from Montauk. It is October, cold mornings, cold nights, which means fishing on the beach is really picking up. That's the big news this week. Um, we're seeing a lot of fish on the south side, a lot of activity. Um, I saw Sean out by the point. I just want to give him a shout out, say thank you for supporting the video and checking me out every week. So I hope you did good out there. Uh, tuna bites still good inshore. Some giants getting caught. Squid up in the local bays, just like last year. Um, the Viking and the Ebb Tide are doing their nighttime squid trips. So if you want to get in on that, that's good to go. Black fishing should set, get kicking in here soon, so I should have some better reports here soon. Sea bass fluke still picking away. Sea bass off Block Island is still going good and locally. Uh, charter boats still doing some good striped bass out in the rips, and we're seeing a lot of surface action, so for the fly and light tackle guys. False albacore, a little thin out in Montauk, but I hear they're in Shinnecock. So that's a quick report. It should get better as the fall gets colder and keep it in check. Also, last week, and here to announce this, Sunday, 2 to 7, Montauk Lake Club, my Castoberfest. Come on out, try to win a full sage fly fish setup. We got raffle prizes from Van Stahl, Grundins, Costa Del Mar sunglasses, a bunch of other raffle prizes. We got beer from Montauk Brewing and a barbecue. Come on out and cast, cast some really good fly rods and check it out. If you're a surf caster and you're in Montauk, it's a great chance to uh, get into fly fishing. All right, Matt, I'll give it back to you. Thanks, everybody. Weather's looking good for the weekend, so catch them up. From Sag Harbor, Will and Andy. Thanks, Matt. Our report this week out of Sag Harbor. Guys, fall fishing is starting to get better and better, although the, the weather's been a little iffy to cooperate. We have good signs of Albies coming in uh, off of Montauk and off of Shinnecock, uh, along with hopefully getting better and better striped bass and bluefish action. Um, on the tuna front, there have been some really good showings of uh, inshore and nearshore bluefin south of Montauk and south of Block. Uh, so hopefully that just continues and, and the fall gets better and better. Thanks, Will and Matt. So report this week also out of Sag Harbor. Um, Porgy sea bass are still going strong, guys. Um, also cod as well is picking up, especially further to the east and a little bit colder water, um, whether that's on jigs or on clams um, or other types of bait on the bottom. Um, so that's really going strong. And also blackfish is coming up soon, guys. Very excited for that as well. It's one of our favorite eating fish. Um, so make sure to get out there and uh, we'll catch you next week. Back to you, Matt. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Thanks, Matt. Hey, everyone. Fall run fishing is on. Striped bass bite is really good. Basically from Montauk all the way down to Robert Moses. Um, primarily a sand eel bite, so a nice simple setup of a bucktail with a fat cow jig strip or the old reliable A27 diamond jig with a green or red tube. Some people swear by the green, some by the red. They're both catching. Um, it's been a bite during the day. It's been at night. There have been some bigger fish. Primarily the sizes around here are overslot to about 40 inches. 
uh, with some bigger ones mixed in occasionally. Those bigger ones typically at night. It's nice to have this kind of weather and this bite going on. And once we kind of got through that that east wind, um, so very encouraging stuff. My buddy Paul Reed got a 38 inch bass over the weekend, and plenty of other people have caught them too. It is a little crowded in some of the spots, so let's be respectful. We're all chasing the same passion. Uh, give people room and uh, enjoy this fishing while it's here. Really. Uh, just awesome that it's here now that fluke bite that you can chase until October 15th is still going last weekend was out with my son on uh, With Rich Ship and his son Jesse we got into a couple of fish no keepers some really big sea robins uh, we're using live peanut as Matt suggested um, And the next day Rich and his son Jesse were out Jesse got a real nice eight pounder So way to go on that one Jesse Offshore tuna bite still going on. A number of guys have gotten out. Jig and chunk bite, just like it was before the blow, is going really well. Very proud of my nine-year-old nephew, Peter Finn Sequest, who joined his dad, Pete Sequest, on Thinkfish Montauk, uh, owned and operated by Jared Fisher. And uh, he did a double overnight, 120 miles out. Got into big eye tuna, got into mahi, got into swordfish. And this little guy was a trooper. So uh, congratulations on your first trip, Peter Finn. Proud of you. Um, hoping this bite's going to stick around to, with the bass, typically a sand eel bite. They do tend to stick around. So get out there. They could be gone tomorrow. You don't want to regret it. All right. Good luck fishing this weekend. Let us know how you do. Back to you, Matt. From Northport, the Cal Harbor Bait and Tackle Report. Hey, folks. We're so close to October 11th, which is like D-Day here on uh, Long Island Sound. We've got blackfish season opens up. And if you ever want to see some of the most ridiculous, funny stuff, your opening day, you go to some of these like popular spots and just sit back and have a snack and watch people just yell at each other. <laughs> I mean, all you can do is laugh sometimes. It's just people get crazy over black fishing and it's such a fun thing to do, you know? So when you go out there, please go out with like a little bit of a smile, you know, and and remember, spotlight, anchor, small boats, big boats, party boats, charter boats, private guys. Everybody is really getting locked on, especially in some of these spots here. You know, the quality of the fishing's dynamite. And the blackfish have been biting like crazy. We have crabs here at the shop. Been selling a lot. We float them. They're like the cleanest, freshest crabs crabs you could ever have. And that's fantastic because it means no bait infections. You know crabs are dirty. So you got to keep them clean. You've got to be selling the right product. Um, as far as striped bass goes and bluefish, the bluefish are more on the small side. And uh, the striped bass are, you know, a mix of schoolies to maybe like uh, mid-teens. I haven't seen some really big ones yet. Uh, remember the temperature right now, the water temperature's hovering around between 68 and 70 degrees, depending on where you're at. And uh, we go from Cold Spring Harbor right down to Crane's Neck. So, you know, there's a lot of bays, estuaries, rivers and stuff. So you got a lot of different scenarios, top water in some areas, jigging deep over by 11B, 28C in those areas. We're in October, so we've seen like the weak fish move out for the most part. There's still some fluke being caught, which is nice. Porgies, I think the porgies are spawning again because all of a sudden the last couple of weeks, the porgies have been like really big. And we generally see that when they're spawning. So there's opportunities off the beach, there's opportunities off the boat, the kayak, go out there, get it done. Uh, think of those people in Florida, uh, those areas getting hit are some of my favorite spots and some of the restaurants I've seen and they just like hammered out. So uh, best of prayers go down to all our friends in Florida and I bid you all peace and tight lines. <laughs>
Uh, I was managed to hook a few bluegills and a small bass, but nothing, nothing spectacular. Uh, I've spoken a lot of fish though. And it's a very weedy pond, as you can see right behind me. It's been very weedy. So this is where fly rods really shine though, because I can pop it into the little spots and then pick it up and cast it again and without bringing it all the way to the boat and collecting a whole bunch of weed. <laughs> but, um, so it's just a gorgeous day. All right, it's nice to get out. Now, as far as the soul water scene, well, I did run a, a meetup trip this past week, and with the wind, we decided to fish the Robert Moses. Now, one of the guys, he hooked into a nice 18-inch uh, fluke. I hooked into a nice fluke, and I lost the right out the hand. Um, saw some, there's a little dogfish, too, in the shallows. A lot of bait. What we really need is this three, a nice storm to really kick off and you know get the bait moving i saw a lot of mullet this year this week i'm just saying get out where you can because winter's gonna come <laughs> and uh th that's it tight lines everybody from huntington captain gage thanks matt what's up everybody captain gage here reporting to you from huntington harbor where i fish seven days a week for sandcitycharter.com check out the website guys and don't forget to tune in weekly to bay rats and buoys the podcast episode three will be up this weekend i'm not sure what day i'm gonna get it up just like yesterday i was so busy towing boats i didn't have a chance to sit on my boat and make this report but here i am in the studio getting it done and guys the wait is over this friday october 11th marks the much anticipated opening day of blackfish season you can hear the excitement in my voice everybody's excited about this you see the video going on behind me i've had the gopros down all week on the bottom of the boat checking out what's going on in a lot of my areas and here's what you're seeing you're seeing the blackfish you're seeing them with giant porgy the black sea bass you're gonna even see a couple of the striped bass swim by in the video we've had a few of those run off on the green crab as well so we're all super psyched, and everybody knows we all love their powerful runs and their bulldogging resistance. I think that's what makes targeting the blackfish so addictive. But our live wells and our live pens are all stocked up with the green crab, so we're super excited to get out there. And don't forget... The big striped bass are here. The big bluefish are here. The false albacore are here. So this time of the year, there is no better time to get out there and catch some fish. So if you're looking to get on a boat and do that, give us a call or check out sandcitycharter.com. We'll be happy to get you out there. Wishing everybody bent rods, tight lines, and I'll see you out on the water. Back to you, Matt. Let's check on in with Chris Landry. Thanks, Matt. Well, there are big bass to be had right now. Today we found some big bass blitzing off the beach in the 40 inch range. We got them on bucktails, we got them on spooks. Uh, when we were fishing the bunker pods off the beach earlier, we didn't get a single bass. It was all giant dogfish, like a dozen of them. And, and same with all the other boats around us. Uh, so you gotta look around to find these big fish. They are there. It's a lot tougher bite than in the last few years. I think because the bunker schools are getting annihilated by these big boats, scooping them all up. Uh, we have to address that issue. Uh, but there are big bass to be found if you put in the time. You can also go up in New York Harbor, uh, go on rockfish charters. They really specialize in that New York Harbor bite. Uh, you can go on fishing the Atlantic at night for porgies and, and other nighttime fish. Uh, can come out on Rocksteady charters for bass, and we will be doing tuna trips at, as weather permits. Uh, there are still uh, a lot of bluefin out there. There are some giants in the mix too. I can't talk too much about that. Um, as far as other fish, fluke season ends uh, Wednesday, October 16th, and tog season begins October 15th. So you can get on that bite as well. Uh, and in the meantime, stay safe. Get tight. Thank you, and Back to you, Matt. From the Western Sound, we have Nuno DaCosta from Tyler Tackle up and ride. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having us, Nuno, here from Tyler. Weekly recap. Black fishing for the guys that were doing some early season recon did very, very well, which usually happens around here because the fishing gets very good for the first couple of weeks. You know, then they start to move off from local pieces and stuff. So black fishing was very good this week. Opening day, Connecticut 
is on Thursday, October 10th. October 11th for us here in the Long Island Sound. The rest of the state is October 15th. So you gotta wait a few days on the South Shore and other areas other than the Long Island Sound. Porgy fishing remains hot. The guys are catching really nice size 12 to 14 inch porgies from shore and boat. The party boat's still doing very, very well. When guys could get offshore, the tuna fishing blew up, guys. The canyons became red hot with yellowfin. The inshore bluefin bite south of Montauk is still going on. Areas off Habs, east, west of that Shinnecock, reducing some bluefin. A lot of giants around, too. You guys want to go east of uh, Rhode Island, south, you know, southeast of Rhode Island, you're going to get a lot of giants out there. Find the scallop boats. You're going to do phenomenal. Um, that being said, uptick on the bluefish here. Lots of blitzing fish at different times. Just the weather has been a factor in trying to get out there and really get on top of them and chase them. So the striped bass is also seeing a little bit of improvement as we should this time of year as the water cools off a little bit as the fall rolls in. We have some good weather coming up for this weekend. Keep our fingers crossed and get out there guys. Go catch them up. Enjoy the fall run. It should be spectacular. Raul Ortiz, the Urban Angler has a report from around the city. Hey guys, Raul Ortiz here, the Urban Angler, with my report. Fishing continues to be good all around the city, Long Island Sound and South Shore beaches of Long Island. You know, we in the middle of this fall run. Uh, it looks like the boats are starting to get in on the action and things are really, really heating up. On the beachfront, you have, you know, anything from 20 pounds all the way up to 40 plus pounds traveling through our waters right now. A lot of guys breaking their personal best and getting their personal best out there. Uh, you have a variety of fish still being caught inside the back bays. And uh, on the Long Island Sound on either side, you have fish get it, uh, being caught right now uh, from schoolie size all the way up to around 20 pounds or so. Um, the colder it gets, the better it's going to get. Um, besides that, uh, I went out the other day and I mean... For a big area maybe like half a football field there was explosions of fish just devouring other fish I mean you know like when you see the mullet, mullet run in, in Florida you know something like that you know fish just coming out of the water and it was crazy I don't know how to explain it but you had to be there and the, the best thing about it I mean I was the only one there which is really really nice you know nobody was there to see that besides me and uh, that was a great experience and at the same time I was hooking up on fish so you, you really can you know beat that anyway guys uh, I want to give a quick shout out to my buddy Joe nothing ever changing on Instagram my buddy Brandon my friend Raul um, you know, thank you guys for the photos. Keep up your hard work. Uh, you deserve those fish that you catch. And uh, I know you do what you have to do to get them. Anyway, uh, tight lines to all. Good luck on this fall run, guys. You need to get out there. The time is now. Time to be on the water. Anyway, back to you, Matt. Tight lines. Some real exciting stuff going on out there right now. The surf bite has been tremendous with big fish and they're on sand eels too, which is even more exciting. That means great day fishing, great night fishing, fishing from the Hamptons, moving their way down to the West End beaches. Guys, if you surf fish, now is the time. There's also some fish showing up on the pods in the ocean as well. The fluke bite is over, but taking its place. The tog season begins, the 11th on the North Shore, the 15th in the bite. I'm going to be out there. I know you guys are going to be out there too. I'm going to report in and let you guys know what I find this weekend. I'll see you next week.